I'm beginning to believe that these old Mercedes diesels that are broken down are kind of attracted to me. They kind of follow me around or come back. This one was one that I worked on probably 15 years ago. And here it is again back at the shop, just like Digby. But this one is terminal, okay? I know with Digby, we played around a lot with trying to get the engine running and figure out what was wrong with it. But I actually put a battery in this thing and turned it over. And I don't even want to show this on a video. It's really embarrassing. As it fires off, it just starts clang, 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 clang. So I didn't even want to do any more with this engine. This owner told me that the engine started overheating. It's just, he kept having problems with the engine overheating. He replaced the thermostat and then suddenly, all of a sudden it started banging and clanging. And he took it into some shop and the shop said, you know, the engine's shot. So I think it's shot, but I'm not going to say that definitely until we take a look at this. I wasn't really even gonna shoot any videos on this car, but I thought this one might be a good one too for us to get inside and find out if we can determine what happened and why it failed. And what is making all that banging and clanging noise? So I wanna look at the engine right now. This is part one of a multi-part series as we take this engine apart to try to find out why it failed. But I just wanna kinda of show you a couple things here in part one. And then in part two, we're gonna actually pull off the cylinder head while it's still in the car. This is a five cylinder turbo diesel engine. It's a 1983 model. And it's the exact same engine that was in Digby's when Digby came back after 20 years. I'm looking around and looking for obvious signs here. No major oil leaks. You know, it's dry underneath, so there's no major oil leaks. One of the first things I do when I come across one of these diesels that's having mechanical problems is I just do a quick check on the camshaft. And I look in here, I look for severe scoring and I reach my finger up into the front, all the way to the front, and I can feel the timing chain. Make sure the timing chain is still on that sprocket. And this chain actually feels pretty tight. It's not real loose. So I don't think it's jumped timing. And this can happen. You know, they can get loose and jump timing, and you got all kinds of metallic things that can happen inside the engine. So that looks okay, but we'll pull the valve cover off tomorrow and take a really good look at the camshaft. I've actually seen camshafts broken, and that'll make a terrible racket when the camshaft breaks because it'll try to turn the camshaft over and make all this clanking noise. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe it could be a camshaft. The other thing is I take a look at the cooling system, particularly because he said it was overheating, and I just pulled this top radiator hose, and this doesn't look promising. You know, look at that, look at the amount of rust in there reach down in the radiator like this. So obviously this thing's been probably eating coolant. Uh, I suspect maybe a blown head gasket or cracked sonar head because uh, the owner confirmed he kept having to add coolant even after he changed the thermostat and he said there was a lot of pressure in the radiator. So when they drained the coolant, it was rusty. I'm going to go after the cylinder head in the gasket first. This will also give us an idea of what the cylinder walls look like. Whatever we find there, we'll move on to part three and maybe start opening up the engine further underneath or actually pull it out of the car so we can get inside it and try to determine why did this five-cylinder diesel engine fail.